Hey, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and today I'm going to work on creating a new profile for an Ender 3 S1. So let's go ahead and get started. Well, as you can see, I have Work Slicer open. So to get started, you have a couple different things you can do. If you don't have a generic profile already in Orca Slicer, you just go to the Setup Wizard, select your region, and then scroll down or search for your printer. And so I'll search for the Ender 3 S1, hit Enter. And of course, I won't find it. Let me try Creality. So here's all the Creality printers. I'm just going to scroll through. I already have the S1 turned on, so that's actually fine. So at least in my case, I have the profile turned on. Just gonna hit next, next, and then next. And we'll just finish. And then I'm going to select over in the printer drop down that default profile. Now in my case, my Ender 3 S1's been upgraded a little bit, so it's more equivalent to an S1 Pro. So I'm just going to use that as my basics for all my tuning. So let's just take a quick look and look at the settings on that printer. I'm just going to start the basic information and let's scroll down and take a look at what all we have. Now, right now, I'm running Marlin with this printer. I'm going to change it to Marlin 2. It's a little bit better. I'm going to leave everything else here the same. Let's just keep scrolling down. Nozzle type. This is actually a, a stainless steel or hardened steel, so we'll go ahead and change it to that. Let's hit save. And for right now, I'm going to change this to the names I typically use, so that way I'm not messing with the default profile. I'm now using my own custom profile. So my next tab, I'm gonna go over to the machine code, take a look there. I do have a probe on this. So in the start code, I can go and hit enter. And I'm gonna add a G29. G29 is a probe command. So I've gone ahead and hit probe and let's save that. So I like to save after I make every change. Multi-material, I'm going to change this from single extruder multi-material. I want to turn that off. That is, it is a single extruder, but it is not multi-material. In fact, if I have that turned on, I believe it'll start doing the advanced pause stuff on me, which I don't want. Let's hit save. Like I said, I like to save regularly as I'm doing this. That way, if I get distracted or something else going on, I know where I am. Just take a look at these settings here. I'm going to change the Z hop type to auto and just scroll down here. Everything looks all right. Save it. And the motion, I'm just leaving that all as the defaults. So I now have the printer set up at least nominally. There might be some other changes I want to go back and make here a little bit later. But for right now, all this looks good. This looks like how I want it set up. So let's close that and let's go down to the filament. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to change this to match my naming convention. And that way I have this set up the way I want. Now, any changes I make are now specific to this printer. And let's just look through these. Now we have uh, the flow ratio, probably needs to be customized. Nozzle temperature, I like the first layer at 210. And then I like to print PLA at 205. So let's change that. Now, personally, I like the bed to be at 65. I always have good luck with that. So I'm just going to bump up the bed temperature on both the first layer and the all preceding, all the next layers. I want to point out, I changed the first layer because I, I think having a little bit hotter temperature helps it grab the bed a little bit better. That's why I select that. Now I have the default NOS on here and hot end, so I'm just going to leave this as the defaults. Let's hit save. Go to cooling. Uh, no cooling on the first layer. I think that's okay. Let's just look at these settings. I think those are okay. I didn't change anything. The 
settings overrides, I need to run some calibration and I'll probably change these. But for right now, the default is fine. The advanced, I'll leave as is. Multi-material, I just want to make sure there's nothing in there active that could possibly screw my print up. And let's hit save. And now the big changes we need to make should occur down in the process, which is the actual print parameters. So I'm going to start with the default. I want to hit save. Let's move that over so I can see it better. And let's rename this. So I'm just going to call it minimal 3DP Ender 3 S1 standard. And I'll start with that. So I've opened the default profile that I've renamed. And I've added the Banshee. And we're just going to basically, as we change settings, take a look at how this affects the speed and the build time. So let me just hit slice and let's see how long that Banshee takes. So right now, this is estimating an hour and 31 minutes. So we're starting off, we're trying to reduce time from an hour and 31 minutes. So to get started, we're going to look over here at layer height. Now my typical layer height, I go with this 0.2. On my first layer, I like to go a little bit thicker, again, hoping that grabs the bed. And so I usually go 0.32. So let's take that and let's slice the bed and just see what that does time-wise. So it really didn't, it affected the time, I think maybe by a minute. So not a big deal, but at least does affect things. Now my next changes is these line widths. And these line widths represent the thickness of the walls. And for me, I prefer print with thicker walls. I don't like these weird multiples. I like having a wall that a consistent wall thickness. And I also like a nice clear multiple so I know how thick my walls are when I start printing or putting things together. So for my default profiles, unless a print says otherwise, I just do 0.5. So let's change all these 0.5. Now the support, I think I'm going to change everything. Yeah, I'm going to change everything to 0.5. I just like, yeah, nice clean numbers. So I've changed those. Let's see what that affects with our speed. So that actually knocks about nine minutes off. I really don't think this is going to have a negative effect. I like it. And this is what I typically do. I don't think it's really going to affect my quality. Let's take a look down here at seams. Now, I've done a video in the past, which I'll link to above, about seam position. I'm going to change this to the contour and hole steam, seam and conditional scarf seam, scarf joint. And let's keep going down here. And I think that's OK. Let's hit slice again. That's bumped it up by maybe two minutes. And that's fine. I just prefer to hide the seam, so I don't mind adding at least a little bit of time. Now, these resolutions, we can leave as is. Since I'm using Marlin, I'm going to turn on arc fitting. Arc fitting uh, changes how basically circles are printed and tries to optimize. So let's slice again. Shouldn't really change anything. Again, pretty much the same. I'm not going to mess with ironing. Well, Something we could turn on is precise wall and precise Z height. Those are relatively new settings. And what that tries to do is if the it tries to adjust the wall thickness on those tops and bottoms layers so that the model is exactly the size it says it is in preview. If I hit slice, that doesn't again change the time any. So we're all right. I'm I'm going to turn those on. Wall generator, we're going to use the Arachne engine. I think that's fine. Scroll down here. I like to use the inner, outer, inner wall printing order. And that'll help with that wall thickness. And it also helps with the seams. So let's slice again, see how that affects things. That upped our time, maybe by two or three minutes. Yeah, and I think that's OK. And I'm not going to change any other settings under quality. I want to hit save. So that's saving my profile. And now let's go over to strength. Now, for me, and this is going to up the amount of time it takes, I like 
three wall loops. So that makes my model a little thicker. I usually leave all these settings alone. On a Banshee, if you look through the documentation, they, rep they rec recommend a infill density of 10%. Let's hit print or slice. We're at 132 again. So that wall change, let's change that back. That puts it at 122. Adding the extra wall really does bump up our time by about 10 minutes. So just be aware of that. I personally prefer the three wall loops, even though that is going to take some more time, but that is an area where you can make a change and lower your time, the less walls the less time it's going to take. Now for me too, I just, I like leaving it, I like the additional walls because I think it makes the model tougher. It also helps hide the infill. The thinner your walls, the easier it is to see the infill pattern. So I'll leave it at three. Go down here, and right now it's on crosshatch. I prefer adaptive cubic. So let's through here and change to adaptive qubit. I think I've read in the past that adaptive qubit is a good balance between uh, strength and speed. Let's hit slice plate. And that took off about a minute. So we're just going to go with that. Let's keep scrolling down. And I think that's about the only other change I'm going to make, or at least under strength. So let's hit save. Now under speed, normally if I was running Clipper, I'd be going nuts upping these speeds. For me, I think these speeds are pretty conservative. So I'm going to bump all of them up by 10 millimeters per second and then work on tuning these. So let's just change all these. And this is really going to have a big effect on how long this model takes to print. The Marlin tends to run slower than Clipper. That's mainly with how it's processing the model and doing the math. So I'm just changing all those. And I'm going to change everything under the overheads. And I just, again, yeah, bumping it up by 10. It seems sort of, and I'm going sort of arbitrary here. But I, I believe, again, these are just very conservative values. And I'm going to up the travel to 175. And I'll leave everything else as is. The jerk, I'll leave as is. Let me hit save here. And then let's see how long this model takes right now. So right now we're at an hour and 26 minutes. So we shaved off some additional time, about four or five minutes. Let's switch over to support and take a look at those settings. But right now I don't need any support on this model, but I am going to turn it on and make some changes, and then I'll turn it off again. Uh, normally what I do is I use, usually use tree supports. I also only do supports touching the build plate. So I'll turn that on. Scroll down here. Everything else looks okay. The base pattern, rectilinear is okay. I think I'll leave everything else as is. Now, I'm going to hit save. I'm then going to turn support off, hit save again. And what that should do is save the settings as I have them set up. So next time when I go in and enable support, those settings will already be there. And I'm going to go to multi material and the multi material, we're leaving that as is. And then lastly, we have other. Now, other, we are going to make a couple changes here. Let's again slice the plate and just see where we're at. So we're at one hour, 25 minutes. I don't like the skirt distance here. I like the skirt to be further away from the model. So I'm going to change that to 10 millimeters. So I want that skirt further away from the model. And as you can see now, I, I can see the skirt a little bit better. It, again, different from the base of the model, so I can see it. Now, something else I don't particularly like that's a default setting is the skirt height is set to two. So it's actually doing two layers on the skirt. I think that's a waste. So I'm going to bump it down to one. I'll hit save. Let's slice again. Doesn't really change the time, but that's just a personal preference. Now I leave the brim type as auto. But let's look at what this looks like when we do auto brim. So on the outer brim, I want to change this to say five, leave the gap as zero. When I hit slice, that'll actually create a the brim you can see at the bottom here. 
Now I want to just turn that back to auto. So the brim width is now saved. So if it does decide it needs a brim, it'll automatically go over and do a brim that's five millimeters, which I like. So that is the way I do my settings. And what I'll do real quick is let me slice this model and then I'll print it and we'll take a quick look at it. But I think with all these settings, we actually should be in pretty good shape and we should get a model that looks pretty good. So let me send this to the printer and then we'll take a quick look. So my Benchy has completed printing. And let's just take a look at this. And I actually think this looks excellent. And this is without me doing very much tuning from the standpoint of low rates or retraction at all. Maybe there's a little stringing on the inside, but I think everything here looks pretty clean and crisp. So, with that being said, that's how I set up my initial profiles for my printers. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks. Have a good day. Bye. This is Mike again. If you're having trouble with your 3D printer, I'm putting a link in the video description of how you can schedule a 15 minute consult with me. I'm more than happy to sit down with you, see if we can figure out what the problem is, see if we can get your printer rolling. Also, if you would like to support the channel, I've enabled memberships. And so for a small monthly contribution, you can help support my work. Now, ideally what I'm going to do is use any money and same for the advertising I get for the channel. I'm going to use that to buy more 3D printers and more equipment and more technology that I could use here on the channel. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.